All right, we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. It says a polynomial f of x of degree n, with n being greater than or equal to 1, has at least one complex 0. Basically, what it's saying, if you have a polynomial like this one or this one or anything, as long as you have x to the first power, you're going to have a solution. You're going to have something that makes it equal to 0. It may be um, a number that you can find, like this number, crosses right on the x-axis, I can find it. Or it may be an imaginary number that actually makes it 0. But there is going to be an answer to the problem that makes it equal to 0. So that's what they call a complex 0. All right, let's look at an example. This graph here, here's the polynomial. It produces this graph. You'll notice there is one, what we call real 0, and I can see it. It's almost 2. Whatever number this is, it makes this equal to 0. But then there's some other zeros because look at the bending. We know it's a cubic. And a cubic must have three zeros for a cubic function. Well, that's one real zero, and the other ones, I can't see them. They don't cross this axis. These are where the real zeros occur, so they have to be imaginary. That's why it says two imaginary zeros. If I go over to this parabola, x squared, x squared has two zeros, right? And you could find this by the quadratic formula. Set this equal to zero. Use the quadratic formula on these things right here. A, B, C, and um, you'll find both zeros. So there's two of them, but they're both imaginary because they do not cross the x-axis. If they cross the x-axis, I would have real zeros. I'd be able to look at this and tell you what they were. So crossing the x-axis, real zeros, not crossing the x-axis, imaginary zeros. Let's look at this one here. Fourth degree, four zeros, right? And it looks like a regular fourth degree, nice and symmetric and everything. but one zero, two real zeros, and what are the other two? They're imaginary. Four zeros total. All right, let's move down here, look at constructing a polynomial with the prescribed zeros. So now I tell you the zeros, you make the polynomial as before up there. All right, here's the zero. Um, the leading coefficient is two. The zeros are negative three, five, and i. So is this a degree three or a degree four? Well, I've been given three zeros, right? But with imaginary zeros, they always come in pairs, right? With that quadratic formula, you always get a plus or minus i. So you should have a positive i and a negative i. Okay? So they come in pairs. So this is actually a fourth degree polynomial. And if I write it out in factored form, you'll see that. Leading coefficient is a 2. For negative 3 to be a 0, would be right there. For 5 to be a 0, it would be right there, right? That makes 5, 0. And for i to be a 0, there we go. But now, since i is a 0, you have negative i is a 0. And for that to be a 0, I have to do plus i. There we go. That's the polynomial. If I want to multiply this out, I start with multiplying these guys out. Because it's easier to multiply this out and get them in to something smaller rather than trying to get a whole bunch of imaginary stuff. So let's multiply these out first. I'll show you what I mean. x times x is x squared. And then you have a plus ix, right? Plus ix. And then you have a minus ix right here. Minus ix. And then you have a minus i squared. And so if you multiply this all out, these add up to 0 i squared is negative 1, opposite of negative 1 is plus 1. So this comes down to this. So if you're multiplying this out to find the whole polynomial, you'll want to do your imaginaries first and then continue on the road. So here I have it done so we can see a little quicker. There's that portion, right? Now I'm going to multiply these two together. And then I just have a binomial times a trinomial. Multiply them up, simplify it down. This would be the polynomial. And you'll notice a quick little thing. I did put that 2 in there. So it's in this one, right? I didn't wait till the end. I put it in here, and then I multiply it through. But there's the, there's the answer. This polynomial has four zeros, right? Look, degree 4. And we know that one of them is negative 3, one of them is 5, and the other two are both imaginary. Last quick example, if I wanted to find all zeros of this guy, I would just let the f of x equal 0 and basically solve it. Subtract 4 from both sides, square root both sides, x is equal to plus or minus 2i, right? So both zeros in here happen to be imaginary, so 2i is a 0 and negative 2i is a 0. Again, they come in pairs.